Welcome to the Met. Wow. Welcome to the Farm Hop Life Men's Forum number four. Uh, I'm Matt DeRocher of a Farm Hop Life, and with me I have. I'm Dylan Schnazy of Study Presence. Sweet. Thanks for being here, Dylan. Yeah, no problem. Always good to be so, here. <laughs> you're a regular. You're regular <laughs> now. So we're going to be talking about branding, sales, and marketing, something I know very little about of all of them. Uh, but first, we're going to we're gonna talk a little bit of a current event. And since everything, um, since there is no news, Dylan check, but just before we went on, there is no yep. news to report on. Zero. Nothing, nothing. nothing going on in the world. Nothing. Nope, just this. Um, I will talk about uh, how I might have, uh, my flock might have bird flu. So just last night, I'm, I'm, I'm putting the, I'm putting the chickens to bed because of predators. Like, I, mm -hmm. you know, I honestly, my going to bed routine, I trained them kind of like Jack trains his, trains his ducks. I yep. clap and like, go to bed, go to bed, go to bed. And I was just doing that like five minutes ago. <laughs> it works. It works. Yeah. So, uh, and I'm everyone, it, I don't do it every night. I do it mm, probably 50% of the time. I count one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm like, should be 17. And I counted, I got 16. I counted again, I got 16. I'm like, what the heck? So I um, go looking for the other one. And we had, um, we have like another smaller chicken coop that I used to, to raise my broilers in last year that just, they don't, it doesn't get used, but it's open. They can just come in and out as they please. Mm -hmm. And so I, I checked in there and there was a dead one in there and I'm like, what the heck? And so uh, I pick it up and it could, I mean, it's obviously cold, but it wasn't totally stiff yet. Mm -hmm. I could still move its like leg <clears throat> kind of and move its wing kind of. So it couldn't have been dead for more than, I don't know, 12 hours, let's say. So like it didn't happen overnight. And that bird is only two years old. And I yeah. think, I think it's a black <laughs> ostrich lorp and its <clears throat> life expectancy is like anywhere from like five to 10 years. And so for yeah. it to just die is weird. Um, symptoms. I looked up symptoms is, uh, discoloration of the feet and comb well discoloration of the feet discoloration of the comb lower uh appetite and lower egg production are, are things to look out for and so i did notice that they weren't eating as much like as a whole i don't know who eats how much right that that'd be impossible mm -hmm. no um and we had a drop in egg production so I didn't notice any discoloration of the comb in the other ones or feet, but this one kind of seemed like its comb was off, but it was also dead. So um, hard to say postmortem. Right. So uh, I had a, I had an interview last week from a lady. Uh, her name is Sophia Neald of, I'm going to give her credit. Sophia Neald of Honey Grove Homestead. And she, what she does is she has a chicken pharmacy. That's what she calls it. Uh, farm with an F. And she like gives her chickens herbs all the time because mm -hmm. she like, you know, she's down in, in Georgia fighting this and that and the other thing, trying to keep them alive. And this is, this is whatever she's been giving them uh, has been working. And so I, I messaged her this morning and, and I said, in your research, have you found preventative maintenance? herbs for chickens to fight bird flu we lost one just yesterday not sure how she said if you free range but can bring them into a designated area that wild birds have no access to that would help using oregano and parsley can help boost their immune system as well as nutri drench which is like uh, additive to their water it's got like vitamins and minerals in it kind of okay. something similar you would give to like um baby chicks when they get home from the mail, I guess. Right. Uh, the best preventative is biosecurity, removing sick chickens from the rest of the flock, having designated clothes and shoes or shoe covers for the coop and yard or wear it. So um, <coughs> just uh, just a little, little tip there for anyone that wants to 
give their chickens a little Im immunity boost would be oregano and parsley. She wrote okay. pa she wrote parley, but I'm guessing she meant to write parsley. I don't know what parley is. Yeah, parley. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Unless her uh, chickens are using parlor. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> but uh, I mean, bird flu could wipe out your flock in a matter of hours. So the fact that none of my other chickens seem to be affected yet um, is a good sign, I guess. But I'm still going to give them oregano and um, parsley. And yeah, that makes sense. Get, get some, I've heard get some oregano's antiviral. Yeah. Yeah, I think she's got video on, um, <clears throat> like on her Instagram and maybe on her YouTube of... Uh, the herbs that she gives her chickens so i can sure. i can link to that in the show notes or chat or something i don't know how to do that right now but anyways that's that's an update from my place yeah uh as we, you were talking about clapping uh, for your chickens it, it was your chickens right yeah okay um my my ducks got out I, I had already put them away and it's really windy here in wisconsin um right now and the door blew over, even though I had a skid, you know, uh, oh. in front of the door. Mm -hmm. So uh, the way that I clapped to get them into bed, and I, I don't know if any of the the listeners out there recognize the the reference, but when we would watch Justin Rhodes' American Farm Tour, mm -hmm. there's a guy in Florida, uh, I think, uh, stole foods. I, I'm probably Stoltz? pronouncing. <coughs> I'm sorry. Stoltz? No, it's like Stoltz Foods. Uh, I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but he's Full Circle Farms in okay. Florida. And to get his cows from one pasture to the other, he'd say, Come on, cows. Come on now. Come on, cows. That's <laughs> so it? it? Yeah, it, it's really funny. Uh, so I, I use that for the ducks. Nice. And the kids get a kick out of it. Come on, ducks. Come on. <laughs> Come on now. Yeah. Just that's it? That's all. Okay. That's it. That's it. Well, yeah. it if it works, it works, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. Jeez, <clears throat> what's your problem? I don't know. Um, I, I was I don't just outside. Know. Yeah. Just outside. Um, ran in to start up the computer. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. Do you need some uh, oregano or parsley? I might, I might, uh, I might have some oregano tea later. <laughs> Just eat pasta. Yeah, Just there we go. Overload on the oregano. Um, well, let's get let's get into the main topic um, then. So, branding. Let's start. Let's start with branding. <clears throat> um, I'm going to pick on you for a little bit. Yep. <laughs> Just Do for it. a second. It's something. It's something super minor but anytime i want to uh tag you in something you have a different handle on every single social media you have yeah, One's like i do <laughs> homestead dad one is like steady presence underscore dyl another is like uh i don't remember what the other one is but it, depending on where you're at it's different on every single one and that drives me crazy I'm it like, is. how am i supposed to remember <laughs> which one like is it dylan is it homestead dad is it steady like what the heck is it how do i yeah do I tag this guy i ah, forget it he'll find me he'll yeah tag no, no that's a good point <coughs> um yeah i should i should just because <coughs> i can't do steady presence on instagram because that's my right. wife's that makes sense. So I should I should do that on float as well. The homestead dad thing isn't getting me anywhere on float. Hmm. So I, I think I I can change that now that they're on their version one. Cause it, it seems like everyone's changing their names. You get notifications on float saying this person changed their name or oh, okay. changed the profile picture. And my lovely assistant just brought me some water. <laughs> Thanks, Ashley. It was getting annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ashley. It was getting annoying. Yeah, right. <laughs> you will hold it for the next 51 minutes. <clears throat> um, From a brewery. 
Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. So brand, uh, you like, I, I listened to a fair amount, not like a ton of, um, Oh, what the heck the guy's name now? Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk, like, okay. <clears throat> uh, about like, you are your brand and he, he, you know, you can love him or hate him, but he's got a lot of crazy, crazy things to say. And, um, so he, he tells the story. Well, he's got a couple books first. And I listened to the audio version of his older book, um, 12 Steps, 12 something. I don't know. No, not 12 Steps. That doesn't make any sense. I don't remember what the book is called. Sure, <laughs> I just sure. listened to it. But basically, uh, you know, reply, like things like when you post something online, reply to every comment. Yep. And, uh, I have a video on like, I, I barely post a TikTok. It's kind of like mm, two, three times a week kind of thing. And he's like three times a day, four times a day, put out content. Like you should be like pushing hard to uh, publish to TikTok uh, every day. And I'm just yeah. like, what do I post? Like, I don't <laughs> not, like, I'm not doing anything right now. Yeah. And so, or it's like, nope, changing another diaper. Oh, going to work. Oh, coming home from work, uh, yep. drinking coffee. Like what, like this isn't, this isn't Instagram where you just like post like mundane crap all the time. Right. 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 <clears throat> I want something of value, but here's something that, that, that I did record and that I was replying to all the comments was, um, I, I had to do something stupid. Um, I don't even want to get into the story of what it was because it, it's so not important. But I had to get something that was super heavy in the back of my truck. I had to build a ramp to get pull the thing onto the ramp. Whoops. Pull the thing onto the ramp and then back my truck up to the ramp to somehow get the heavy thing into it. And so Katie was driving the truck and there's a little hump in the dirt. And so she's. She has it in reverse and she's just kind of trying to like bring it smoothly. But because of that hump in the dirt, she gives it a little gas. And because, because my truck is like, it's not like souped up. That's not right. It's just, it's a twin turbo half ton. So it's, yeah. it, it hauls ass. It, it, the tailgate was down and smashes right into the ramp that I built. <laughs> and like, and like a little piece of plastic like broke on it. It was like no big deal. And so like, I, um, I like, wasn't even mad. I'm just like, eh, whatever. I'm like, I was so drained trying to get this heavy piece of crap in the back of the truck. I had no energy to care. <laughs> and so, yeah, yeah. and so half the people were like, wow, uh, you know, way to have patience. Like I would have freaked out. And then, you know, I'm replying like, why? Like you're, are you, scared to get your grocery getter uh, a little broken or like a little scuffed or dinged up. Like you just, you know, park it in the lawn and never do anything with it. Or is it meant for work? And then the other yeah. half were like, Oh, typical woman driver. And like, I, I was like being super snarky to those people, which was a negative because then comments that weren't like, you know, weren't intended to be negative. I took them as negative. Right. Right. Your perception changes. So like, honestly, anytime that there was like a uh, typical female driving, like blah, blah, blah. I just ended up blocking those people. And most of the time they either have zero videos or like super crappy videos. And so like, they're not worth uh, engaging in conversation anyways. Like that's a, like so I joke, you want to know where all the crappy YouTube comments went? They went to TikTok. That's where they live now. Oh. <laughs> That's funny. And so um, I've just been, you know, I've been replying to to all the comments, mostly on that video, because it's up to like 200 some thousand views now. <laughs> and Oh, wow. <laughs> I know, over something so simple. Like, and I honestly forgot that I had posted it. Four days later, I'm like, Oh yeah, let's check that. And then it was just like exploded. I'm like, what happened? What? <laughs> but <clears throat> it was it was a lot of work going through those comments. And long story, 
long because <laughs> I definitely didn't shorten it <laughs> whatsoever. I think replying to those comments helps the algorithm stay relevant and showing up in people's feeds. Oh, interesting. Okay. I think I think that's what's going on there because it's it's uh, active. It's like an active thing. So people are still watching. St- people are still commenting. And if I'm replying and help feeding that conversation, it's still getting views is what. Um, yeah, kind of keeping that volleyball in the air. Basically. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. So, yeah, you yeah, got we, it. We uh, posted a reel. We we made an Instagram reel for the first time in last fall, and yeah. it it was it was popular. It was surprisingly popular. Like all these people that we've never heard of liking the reel. So right. we, we got to make we got to make more of those. That's a good way. Uh, it's it's been <laughs> reels on Instagram are basically TikToks. Like you right, could right. basically like copy and paste and do it that <clears> way. <throat> it would be it would be uh, allowed. Right, so. right. Um, yeah, kind of shifting. Um, it, talking more on branding. Yes, a lot of what what I think of today, th- the name of your business is also part of your brand. Yes, it's the it's the first thing that people see on either your business sign or that they come across on social media. So when you when you see Farm Hop Life. It kind of tells you what what you're about. Yep, and that that's why we picked the name Study Presence. Is that it gives you that that warm, cozy feeling that someone's gonna be there for you. That that we're that we're not we're not here to to give give you everything, but like we're like the name says, we're steady. We're here for you when when you need us. Right in, in the world of 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 birth work and nutrition. But I, I also see that as a pattern in other health related fields. So some of the businesses in our area, they, they tell you what they're about. So like in our name, in our area, we have like shifting tides chiropractic that, that tells you what they're trying to do. They're, they're trying to shift the tides of health. Mm-hmm. Or Sprout Family Chiropractic. That is about kids. You, you can tell sure. just by the name and so others. But it it's that first thing that you see. And if, let's say, both of those chiropractic offices, if it was just Smith Chiropractic, it doesn't set you apart. That, that rebranding... Mm-hmm. In, the, in the the case of shifting tides, they're a, a multi generational uh, chiropractic family. Yeah. She broke away and rebranded, and I think it paid mm-hmm. off. Sure, because it it tells you what they're about, not just uh, somebody's last name. Right, which is who I go to. Actually, it's just Matt's Family Chiropractic. Just, right, right. It's just ironic that it's M A T Z, um, and but yeah, that's. I mean, they do well, they're busy all the time, but yeah, it doesn't like, it doesn't state like kind of like their mission or um, uh, any personality, honestly. Exactly. So, And for me, I'd, you know, probably lean more towards a business that you kind of see the mission within the name of the business because we're, we're in this, this society that, we won't even copy a URL into a search bar anymore. If it's not a QR code or mm-hmm. a clickable link, we're, we're moving on. And so you need that in your business name. Right. If they have to dig to see what you're about, you're too, it's too late. It's, you're done. Yeah. Yeah, I tried I tried Googling myself recently, like farm hop life like if it was if it's all one word you get everything we've done and if it's all spaced out um i think we still show up a little bit there's like uh just like a few things actually i should start putting tags in all like my podcast feeds and all my videos just farm hop life like all spaced out so it's still i should i should go back and do all that so we catch 
catch all of it, but um, yeah, that'd be clever. I, I just just had that thought. Um, let me. I got a. I got a couple of little uh, snippets of uh, someone like from a couple articles defining brand. If we want to yes. go over that really quick, do it. Uh, I don't remember which article this is from. First, you have to know who you are, who you help, and why they should care. Brand. So you should be able to like a good brand would kind of like what you were saying. It should, they should know most of the story already by just by um, knowing your name. Now things, things that, you know, if you think about other companies like Google, Nike, like you don't, you like just from the name and name alone, you don't know what they do. Right. But that's probably where the second part comes in would be marketing, but we can get to that. Uh, we can get to that next. Yeah. I mean, they, those, those brands have, they have legacy associated with them. So mm -hmm. before social media, before you know, people could lose interest in copying a URL people were out on basketball courts and they knew that Nike meant shoes because it was on every shoe that people saw. Right. Or Google. I, I, I think I'm old enough to remember that Google used to have ads. Did, like, didn't they have like TV ads? Oh, oh, that's what you mean. I was like, I'm pretty sure they still have ads, but I don't oh, yeah, know if they use ad blockers. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But like the Google, the company itself, and then they were able to, I don't know if they coined it or just the phrase, go Google it. That's the brand. It, it tells you, you know, right. go search it, go Google it. Yeah, now it's a verb. Or it's, yeah. whatever it's a lot yeah. of things yeah but if you're starting a company or a business off the ground in today's market like you said it people should know what you're about in in the business name exactly the uh other little mm -hmm. snippet i stole from some article is Branding, for instance, is the process of shaping the image of a company in the minds of customers. So kind of like what we already what we already had mentioned here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, maybe I can scroll down to my uh, my shirt here. But uh, so this is this is our logo. And a friend of ours had suggested to use our family as the the face of our business because we're a family right. business. Yeah. And so. Uh, yeah, you can see here. So if, if we hand out our business card, you would see all of the services that we offer. Yes. You get, you get study presence, you see who is providing the service and that looks like a family that you would want to do business with for yeah. the services that we offer. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, it's, it's all there. Um, let's, let's move on to marketing. I know sales was second, but I think it goes branding like in order, right? Your brand marketing and sales. Cause you can't, well, usually you can't sell anything unless you market it. That's right. So, um, I know Jack always says telling your story so well that others tell it for you. Yeah. So I, so the, in how I came up with like first farm hop life, like, okay, it tells you all you need to know right in the name. And it's easier to remember than Matt Durr, Matt, Durr, Matt, Durr, Matt, Matt, uh, who knows? And then they give up, like they, they can't think about it. If you took like two or three simple words, then like should be easy to remember. Right. Yeah. Easier, yeah, easy to remember than Matt DeRozier. So, um, and then the second thing would be like your tagline. It should be easy to tell your story. And so I'm like, how can I, in the fewest amount of words, how can I describe what we do? 
traveling homestead family done like yes. so i put that i put it everywhere um i put it as a tagline for all of our like on our, all of our social medias um because it's so easy to remember i actually had someone reach out to me on twitter just randomly like traveling homestead family what does that mean <laughs> and i was <laughs> like uh so she was curious and i'm like you know we're gonna next year we're gonna be in an rv and going from homestead to homestead farm to farm whatever and helping helping people out she's like oh i see i thought you were like you figured out how to homestead on the road and i was like i mean you could put a green roof on your rv i guess and she yeah yeah because so she is asking because she's trying to do that she's trying to have a homestead while in her rv yeah and she she says the green you know i thought about the green roof too but it would just be too heavy i'm like oh yeah good point (laughs) right 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 (laughs) have some goats up there (laughs) some goats and just like have like two thousand pounds of wet sod and well i guess it wouldn't be a lawn it would be um i don't know prairie or something cover crops like yeah (laughs) uh corn (laughs) maybe some clover for some bees oh that would be cool have a beehive up on the top here as long as they're like uh domestic bees and not like uh uh, aggressive or anything like that but but yeah that's uh telling telling your story so well that others tell it for you it's pretty pretty simple i've actually had people tag me on twitter like like hey we should do a community like basically like a community barn, like an old school barn raising, you know, people, people needing uh, help with this project and that project. And someone just straight up, just tagged me, didn't even say anything. Just like <clears throat> this guy. <laughs> and I yes. was like, Hey, cool. People know what I'm about. Yeah. We, we need a handle. I, so as you know, I, when, when it comes to, pitching ourselves at the end of an episode it's different every time <laughs> my wife will uh point out yeah but, uh, i mean we have it on the back of our shirts so it's two parts we build community and then the second part is about farm events but we i need i need to work on that a catchphrase or what, what did you say it a slogan a tagline a tagline yeah, mm. we need a tagline. But, you know, people coming out to our farm events, meeting us, in the future we'll have mom support groups out at the farm. Right. And so people just bring their babies out and all the moms hang out. So locally people can say, you know, talk to one another and say, hey, you know, we we gained a lot by going to these mom's nights. It it gave me a lot of uh, community after we had our baby and I I was around a lot of people of like mind. And so you should come out, you should come out. In fact, when, when we had our kids, we, we attended kind of a family night at our uh, lactation consultants office. So, and it was called weight check Wednesday. So every Wednesday you could bring your baby in, you get uh, a free weight check uh, just to see, you know, are they on track? And then moms would be in community with each, with each other. And then if you had any questions about uh, nursing, the lactation consultant was right there and, and it was great. And it was so great that I recommended any new parents to to go to that that meetup mm-hmm. uh, it benefits the parents it benefits the lactation consultant that could get uh, business out of it but more importantly i was i was telling her story because right. our experience was so powerful and that's what that's what yeah that's exactly what uh, jack alludes to um so one thing that helped me a lot is um, doing like a word map to create your tagline. Mm. Take 
So what did you say? Building community and barn events? Yeah. What if you just smash it together? Building community, barn events. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Something like, yeah. So, yeah. But what you but what you could do is um, you know, building community would be on your word map. Barn events would be on your word map. And then looked like on the bottom of your sweatshirt you had a bunch of other stuff. Yeah. Um pregnancy so like, dietitian, doula. Yeah, so like homeschooling support. So like a few of like your like a little bit of your mission statement, like like write like a mission statement and kind of explode it, like tear it apart. And you can also like use like the thesaurus to, you know, kind of use different words like, okay, like I don't really like the way the word like, you know, barn event. Like, hmm, could there be something like different other than barn event? Like let's call it something else or um just just kind of play with words really right right to, to figure out what sounds good so it's like a simple tagline um is what helped me a lot so yeah that's that's a good idea i'll have to do that i'll report back next week <laughs> <laughs> figure out that'll be our uh that'll be our news the minute on fox news dylan's yeah. <laughs> steady presence the blah blah blah, blah. Yeah, it'll be fox on the, news the last page <laughs> homepage we'll we'll just we'll photoshop it or something there we go um so another snippet about marketing from an article i won't cite because i don't know where it came from uh you need to figure out an awesome and interesting way to get people in front of your message and interested in what you are doing so like how do you get people interested in what you're doing well for you specifically um people are always having babies People That's always right. want to get eat healthier food. Yeah. Um, people struggle with both of those things. Yeah, we do get the uh, crossover. You know, people people trying to get pregnant and have had issues in the past, and them realizing that it's that a portion of it could be due to nutrition. So they 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 come to Dude us needs to eat more oysters. Yeah, and uh, beef liver. Oysters and beef liver. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Put it in a pill. Yeah, definitely. And so they, they come for that first nutrition consult, get in touch with Ash, find out the services we're providing are awesome, and then they're sticking around for uh, doula support when they do get pregnant. Uh, and then after they have the baby, they come out to some – mom support groups and see that we're uh, raising food here on the farm and uh, they want to help out, do some barter uh, for, for work. Uh, we give them some right. food, but it's all, it's all integrated. So uh, at, at my work, they, we have this concept of the uh, full liner approach and it, I work for a uh, paper machine supply company. And so our, our strategy is to, offer all the solutions needed for a new paper mill so that they only have one source to go to if they have a question. And I kind of take that same approach with new families. We, we have all these things that we offer and they all integrate together. So you can, you can come into our business through the nutrition, the doula or the, the farm events and growing food. If you have questions about growing food, they all, they yes. all go together. And that, and that's exciting. And that interests people. Right. Um, if, so you kind of have like a, you have like your niche or your vertical kind of carved out. So it's all about kind of like this one thing. So kind of like farm hop life, I, I'm about growing food and like, you know, and typically the things that surround growing food, you know, a lot of people in this space also homeschool. So we talk about, talk about homeschooling and, um, you know, Are you just, just talking about like topics to talk about on the podcast. Kind of a little okay. bit. Yep. And you know, things that people want to talk about. And so, because right. we're also talking about growing food, there's things like, 
how do you grow more food? And so that comes into like being able to talk about permaculture or um, just whatever. Yeah, well, I find it interesting the the audience that you get from, let's say, talking about homeschooling. Well, if those if the people that are homeschooling questioned the status quo on education, what yeah. else are they challenging the status quo on? And you'll find that a lot of homeschooling families are also about organic food, Bitcoin, owning right. guns, etc. It, it, it's interesting. You yeah, that's, that's the idea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, you know, people, all these things like, hey, what do you, you don't, you don't like holding money, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> nope, I like, like two people that I know of that I've talked to, just the ones that I've interviewed out of, let's say, 12, 15 or so, uh, have bought a lumber mill recently. So Interesting. we talk about that a little bit, which is pretty sweet. Um, yeah. And a lot of them, surprisingly, not really, prep. A lot of them prep a lot. Like I just, uh, I talked to an Australian lady um, on Saturday night. And I'm, I'm going to release the, the interview a little bit later. But um, she she's like, I'm prepped for a year. Uh, I, I was already a prepper, but. Uh, the one thing that really did it for me was that we had horrible floods and I was stuck in my house with no power and no way to use the toilet or running water um, for four days. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, It was just her. Her husband was away for work. And so um, she had to figure it out. Yeah. But, so, I mean, we're on the, the topic of, uh, you know, piquing people's interest, uh, along the lines of marketing. So when you do the shorts for your interviews, mm -hmm. that is very good marketing because it, it conveys, it conveys part of the, the full broadcast, but it, it's something that someone else can say, Hey, did you look at this? Look at what, look at what Ashley Schnazy said about giving birth. <laughs> right. She's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I found it funny that all the clips that you made from our interview, they were all things that Ash said. <laughs> I don't know. You were pretty quiet after the interview. You didn't say a whole lot. There was nothing, I know. There, there wasn't but, much to, to add. No. It, it's just interesting that all of the, the clips that you made, they were taglines that, that she said in the interview. And oh, they were I see. Very... The, the titles were. I see the titles. Yep. I I don't like, know why I stopped doing that. I should go back to, to quotes. Like um, mm -hmm. this thing was said at the. Yeah, I should go back yeah. to doing that instead of just like, uh, uh, Marines movies. <laughs> like Marine. Like I think the one of my latest ones is like, a, what's a Marines like favorite movie? And spoiler mm -hmm. alert, it's Iwo Jima or something. <laughs> Right, right. No, but those those shorts were excellent, and I, I shared Thanks. those on um, social media. And you know, I, I think I just uh, I just thought of something while while talking about that. So if someone shares a clip that you made, that's that person sharing your story. Exactly. Even if they yeah. even if they didn't verbally do it the act of them sharing it is telling the other person's story. Right. Telling farm hop life story. Right. They, they farm hop life can get these people to say these things about a topic. And it's interesting. Right. So is so, there a way I, I'm not like, I'm not very well versed on Instagram. Is there a way to basically share someone's, post on Instagram or is it basically like you need to steal their image and then give them credit in the comments? Um, the way that I handle that is I just share it in my story. Like, there's Oh, the, I see. So it like only send, lasts 24 hours. Okay. That's right. Okay. So like I just send it to my story and, um, 
<laughs> that's the creative way that I get my family to learn about permaculture is I put it in my story because they're expecting like uh, pictures of my kids or videos of the sure. kids doing chores or whatever. And then they see, bam, a statement by Jeff Lawton. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't come for this, but I guess I saw it and I can't forget it now. <laughs> tap, 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 tap. <laughs> What uh what TikTok does is if your video is short enough, you can stitch it, or I guess someone can download it and then cut it and then stitch it. Which means like we can either do side by side like we're doing now. Well, that's a duet, I guess. So like you mm -hmm. play along or sing a song or whatever together, do a dance together. Um, but if you stitch it, it'd be like I said something. It's so, like I um. Like I back up into that uh, or Katie backs up into that ramp and then someone was like, their reaction is like, oh my gosh, just like, just like wrecked or ruined or something. I don't remember. So like if someone wanted to like basically edit the video, they could. Oh, so it, it would, could further yeah. your marketing because down in like at the bottom of the screen, it'll say like, you know, from Farm Hop Life or something like that. Yeah. So they give you credit in the video if it's all done within the app. Yeah. So it's kind of like people using classic rock music and rap songs. Kind of, yes. Where they kind of like get credit for like, oh, Crazy Train is relevant now because some guy used it in a rap song. Sure. So like there's, uh, I'll, I'll give you an example, is that... um someone there was i've had this song stuck in my head for like two weeks now there's a bbc guy like an old uh old interviewer or journalist that worked for the bbc that was being interviewed himself by someone else and she's like do you know like do you rap and i don't know why he's like i did a weird whatever special on rap and uh and she's like, do you remember any of the rap? And he goes, my money don't jiggle, jiggle. It folds. I'd like to see you wiggle, wiggle, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and it's like he goes off for like a minute and people did dances to it. People did like little lip syncs to it. And one of my favorites was someone was like holding their ferret <laughs> and making a dance. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I don't know. It's just, um, I mean, if you can get, if you can do something on TikTok, that um people will respond in that way that's huge for your marketing and hopefully right. that leads into sales yeah so let's talk about sales <laughs> uh so going back to jack spirico he always says uh, sales is a transfer of belief like i need this product or service so like that's marketing right. was the telling of the story sales transfer of belief i need this product or service um so how how do you guys get that transfer of belief that I need this product or service, whether it be uh, you know, a dietitian or doula or um, lactation uh, consulting or any of those things? Yeah, so I think right now where we're at, we're kind of growing by word of mouth. And so... Yeah, like, let me let me keep. You go first. Let me keep thinking about that. I haven't sold anything, so this I know, is easy right? for me. So uh, I I don't uh, I don't have that transfer of belief. So what I guess what's what's interesting, and I'll, I'm going to give away my secret, which is totally fine. I was always going to be transparent, regardless. Um, was that I could. If someone, like someone that I've either been to their farm or interviewed them or something, like I've, I've vetted them in some way that, you know, they make, like they're, they're hustling, they're, they're willing to do the work, um, they have a good product, that I will uh, boost their stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll plug it, you know, and if it's of value to them, Give me something. Let's barter. Whatever. Let's figure it out. But if it's 
if I'm doing this and it's not of value to you, then I'm going to stop doing it. Right. But if it is of value, I should get something for that. Let's talk about it. But I'm going to do it anyways. And if it goes somewhere, let's talk about it. But I'll, either way, like I keep saying I'm going to do it, but I just like the time to do it. We bought this goat milk lotion um, from from one of uh, the people that I interviewed, Kaylee Hart out of, mm-hmm. out of New York. It's really awesome stuff. I just, I've never made like a promo video before. And so I'm like, I keep going over my head, like how to like, how am I going to do this? How am I going to frame it? What do I want it to look like when it's done? And so I was going to make, once I do do it and like it's polished the way I want it, so it looks good. I was going to track like the analytics as well and like, and see, you know, okay, I've, you know, I've had this many click throughs. So people click on this link to send her to the thing. So I know how much traffic I'm sending her way. And after that, I don't know because I'm not part of her, you know, website sales, right. I'm just sending traffic that direction. So I'm curious, I'd be curious to see on her end, does that translate to sales? All these clicks does that translate to sales kind of thing. And so if it does, you know, maybe, you know, I get some free lotion or soaps or whatever it is that um, she's got. Right, right. You have a skill of producing audio visual content and she doesn't. Basically, so, yeah. Right. It's it's different. So, I mean, she's on Instagram and stuff, but like it's different. It is. So, yeah, by providing that service, uh it, I mean you I mean, you could do it for that first product and then if you know, it generates sales on her end, but then she doesn't hold up her end of value for value, well then it's pretty apparent that you wouldn't then continue to do that in the future for another product of of hers probably not like oh like i want to i want to support you so i'm going to do this regardless right Right. um i'm just gonna i'm gonna do this because i want to do it i want to help support you Mm -hmm. um but you know if it was of value like we keep (laughs) like we keep talking about i should get some value back right right so, um, but yeah, it was kind of like, like how I pitched you about the ramp salt. Like if you make awesome ramp salt, I want to like, I want to, uh, you know, push your ramp salt. Right, right, right. And, and if it amounts to nothing, I'm not going to get anything back. True. Yeah. But I it was am... fun plugging your ramp salt. So yeah, definitely. That's, that's as far as that went. Yeah. So, I might have to think about that more because we we have I think we have quite a bit of ramp salt that we can, you know, package up and it's shelf stable. So sure. we'll just have it laying around. So yeah, I might have to take you up on that. Uh it'd be like but, it, I'll steal that uh Frank's red hot, like the uh, steady presence ramp salt. I put this shit on everything. <laughs> <laughs> just blatant rip off. You <laughs> not do it. Because that, that blatant ripoff is the uh, what we were just talking about previously about using other That's people's true. content going forward. Or instead of shit, say salt. I put that salt on everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And people people get it, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, for us, the, yeah. the transfer of belief. So we the few doula clients that we've gotten recently have been through other people you know sharing our story so i guess they were yeah. marketed they were marketed to you know by sharing by sharing our story but what made them click what made them you know buy the service they you know they had to have that transfer of belief. And so, so for us, it's that transfer of belief probably occurs during an initial consult. So Ash does a 30 minute, 
you know, free consult to see if this service is right for you. And in that 30 minutes, that's, that's her time to shine and, and, and complete that transfer of belief. And boy, do we have evidence of why you need a doula. We have, sure. we have data, scientific data that shows poor, poorer outcomes in hospital settings and, and emotional testimonials of people either using the hospital with a doula or a home birth. And we, we have that on our side. So we, with all of that, I mean, I mean, to, to have that transfer of belief is, uh, we can do it in that 30 minute consult. That first, I, I don't doubt that because I could have used Ashley, uh, today, Katie had a bad, uh, bad doctor's visit today. And so like, well, I don't think, uh, it was, it was just stressful for it. It wasn't like bad news. It was just like, wow, now I have more stress because her, her doctors, like the one who was supposed to be uh, doing the surgery because scheduled C-section is going to be out of town. And so now the new doctor, like she doesn't like him, that kind of thing. Right. So, but I don't think Ashley would be in the room with Katie at this a 10 minute, what was supposed to be a 10 minute appointment, but Ashley could be that uh, level of support, like, you know, um, before, before the cert, like before the surgery and be like, this is what happened. Blah, 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 and just like, Ashley could be there for her. Like, I'm like, yes, I'm her husband and I'm, you know, I'm listening, I'm caring, I'm, understanding being empathetic all these things but like there's a certain level of support that you get from talking with other women yes and specifically women that are well versed in what you're talking about yeah so, i think it's an easy sale honestly because emotions are high hormones are high uh stress yeah. is high all these things so it's like can I, will you just help me? Kind of like, 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 uh, it just occurred to me, Ashley is like the farm hop life for pregnant ladies. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, based on what you just said there, it's almost like we need a service kind of like phone a friend. Sure. Like, just like uh, 50, 50 bucks or a hundred bucks. Um, after, after let's, uh, you get like five phone calls or whatever. Um, after a doctor's appointment, you call me up and you vent to me. What did that doctor say to you that pissed you off? <laughs> just, just get it all out there because what you said was right. The appointment may not be an appointment where the doctor delivers bad news but they could say something in the wrong way that causes stress, but the doctor didn't know it. He's just providing medical jargon. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that rather you need someone to validate that, that the appointment did not go well. Your feelings are still valid Right. Even if there was no actual bad outcome. If that makes yeah. sense. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> but, um, I mean, something like that, that would, the, and then if, okay, so let's say your wife used a service like that, and then you market you short you shared the story of how that helped your wife yeah well then let's say that that kind of service is something that could happen nationwide mm -hmm. Th that's a that's a nationwide service because you know we're only a phone call away and you tell let's say you tell the story of how ash helped your wife 
you know, during a phone call. And that when we make a sale on the phone, a friend service, Mm -hmm. every sale, we transferred belief into you that, right. That we can help. So it's, it's, in that scenario, it's almost like marketing and sales go hand in hand. They're very yeah. closely related. Yeah, that's why they always get lumped together. Like, yeah, uh, in like, oh yeah, sales and marketing department. But no, it's two different things. It's vastly different things. Like a lot of people market on TikTok. Like they give, they do giveaways. Like five thousand dollars, whoever gets the most views, like on TikTok for promoting this thing or whatever and so like hundreds of people will jump in on this like five thousand dollars holy smokes and so but like so they get hundreds of people creating hundreds of videos not each Mm -hmm. just total right um so you get a hundred videos trying to promote your product for five thousand dollars that's super cheap like that is cheap uh you know marketing uh like a marketing budget but for mm-hmm. maximum effort, right? Like yep. uh, for max, I guess maximum outcome. And right. a lot of people like actually like, and I agreed. It's it's kind of uh, a dirty way to to do your marketing, but it it works, I guess. Um, I right. mean, constantly getting like every fifth fifth uh, TikToks like an ad for some stupid game or whatever, some stupid shower head. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Um, but anyways, there was something else I wanted to wrap up on, and I don't remember well, what it was. Kind of. Uh, oh, I remember. Okay. Oh, go ahead. Go, I was gonna say, if you guys start a hotline, you're gonna need a call center, but that's expensive. I what know. you should do is uh, because obviously Ashley can't take calls all hours of the night. She'd never get any sleep, and she'd be the one that needs uh, <laughs> a phone a friend. Right. Um, you guys, you should learn how to program. Uh, like a artificial intelligence through so like Ashley bot or something like that. Yeah. And so like they call, they call whatever and it's hooked up to like a number. And so it answers as Ashley and has all the responses as Ashley, but just like keep training it, like, uh, you know, give it training data. And so, it, you know, it's kind of like those, like the thing where like you build it once and you keep, like profiting from it after only having like build it once. I forget right, what it's, right. there's a, there's a term for that. It's a, uh, it's a, you know, like, let's say like, like you build a table, it's a build it once, sell it once. Yeah. You can't repeat it. But like, if yep. you have like a membership or whatever, um, you build it once and it's just infinite sales. Right. Yeah. So it's not, not cash cow. Is that what you're thinking of? No, there's an actual term for it. I just don't remember what it is. Right. Um, we're. Do you remember what uh, you you wanted to wrap up on? Yeah, I was just gonna say, kind of to summarize. If if you market your business well, the selling part of it should be easier. Right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna be going on a business trip uh, in a couple weeks and. The, the better the better I can do at, let's say, collecting data, understanding the customer's priorities, their objectives, what, what a successful result looks like. And, you know, I'm going to give a presentation on, you know, tackling each of those points and saying not, not how our product can solve them, but this is what this is what you're looking for to, to solve your problems. And it almost, it, it leads them like, it's almost like inevitable that they have to buy your product because you've, you've basically laid everything up for them to, uh, you know, take the, uh, you know, lay up in basketball. Yeah. But uh, the marketing should be so, well done that the selling part is like the the one percent after the 99 percent of the work that you've done agreed the, the transfer of belief doesn't take that long if the marketing the the sharing of the story was very effective 
Yes. Sorry, I'm I'm uh dang it, this ticker is not working. <laughs> I keep <laughs> trying to edit it. I was trying to plug our stuff, but it's oh not sure, working, sure. So. Uh so let tell tell people where they can find you. Yeah, so my name is Dylan Schnazy at Study Presence. We build communities up through new family support and <laughs> I have to keep working on it. <laughs> but after this, I'm going to change all of my socials so that they, they match up. But uh, you can find me on Instagram, Float, and Facebook. Does that mean you're going to have to start over? No, I can just change my change the, the name. I don't think you, I don't think you have to start over. All right. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll good luck it. with that. That sounds like a lot of work. Uh, and I am Matt DeRocher <laughs> of FarmHop Life, farmhoplife.com. Check us out. There's an About Us page. You can read all about us. Traveling Homestead Family. And thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We appreciate your time. And we'll see you next week with a different topic.